Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we look at something that's a guilty pleasure for me. This is going to be the numbskulls explaining Necrons to my girlfriend. Now, I've seen things from the numbskulls before. I know I like their humor in abridging, which they have done before, and it was actually really awesome. I haven't seen anything they've done about Warhammer 40k. That said, I know this topic. I've watched other people explain it. I've seen so many of Luton's videos, who is basically the high-end level. This is all the minutia you need to be a massive fan with essentially a college level dissertation about this entire franchise. Then I've seen Bricky, who is very much the, Hey guys, check this out. This is a thing. It's the noob level. And frankly, it's really fun to watch and see what people are getting as the basic entry point to 40 K this, I don't know, just with the name alone and how he's breaking down to a specific faction. This could be anything from, and here's a comprehensive guide to this entire faction to, uh, please love me. I don't know which way this is going to go. And if it happens to go the please love me route and it does actually work, I might use this on my wife because if I can get her into 40k, we're both going to have crippling addictions. That's actually a horrible idea in hindsight. Hmm. Might need to rethink my plan. More importantly, there's a link below to the original video. Hit it up and let's get started. This is my girlfriend. She knows nothing about Warhammer. Oh. I know some things about Warhammer. I'm pretty sure that's one of the Dawn of War games. So we thought that it would one. be fun to make a video where we Whoa. sit down and learn about Dude, the Grimdark world of 40k. I Wait, that's a gay wrath? Gay wrath. Oh god, that is actually the most accurate way to describe Karn the Betrayer. Yeah, actually, if you've seen some of the art for these guys, they are, I think the term is Bara. I'm not into that kind of stuff, but I've been to Promise Town plenty of times, so I've seen it. Way more often than I was expecting the first time I went there. It was, that was a shock. Okay, I initially thought it would be really funny to accurately recreate the Horus Heresy. In The Sims, it, it. I paused at a very weird time. It didn't go well. well so, like the Horus Heresy. The prophecy is complete. Vulcan's on the fire, nothing new. The Emperor left is when this My happened. Man, there's a fucking lake outside. He's fine. Anyway, I thought long and hard about something simple and easy to go through what with somebody hell? who knows nothing about the setting, something with no background lore required. Oh, those are the Necrons, the, not the flesh terrors, the ones who have the curse that makes them think they can put on flesh and become human again. Or anything or, like well, that. the equivalent. So I thought to myself, why not start at the beginning and God. talk about one of my favorite factions, the Necrons, my precious, funny little skeleton. Wait, did they actually, did he actually kit bash in a Necron double fisting it like the meme with the skeleton with the two guns? I hope this is actually theirs because that is so many kinds of epic I mean, if someone appeared on the tabletop playing Necrons and this was their general, I don't care if it's the wrong model. This guy wins by default. Just funny little skeleton men. I'm bound to miss some details or might even be completely wrong. Angron's new skill and mischief will allow him to trick others with a hand buzzer? As the skill level increases the new mischief. Oh, because it's based on what he did in The Sims. Sorry, I didn't recognize this for a second because I've never played The Sims. Yeah, I know. That's kind of weird to say, considering it's just been out so long, but no, Bond never tried. Things. So if you'd like, you can read some Necron books yourself. That Joker I highly Angron. recommend the Infinite and the Divine and the Twice Dead King books. I'll I've never heard of the Twice Dead King, but I've heard that the Infinite and Divine is one of the short stories they wrote, and I've seen multiple people describe it as the best Warhammer 40k story. N nothing else, just the best. Is it true? I don't know. I haven't read it. But if I can find a hard copy of it, I'll do that. Mostly because I just like getting hardback books. I mean, you can get paperback anywhere, but they fall apart. A lot. So many issues with that. It's like, you just drop it once and somehow it manages to crack the paper. And you didn't even know it could crack because it's freaking paper. Then, I'm projecting, but <laughs> let's just let's just ignore all this. It's, it's actually causing me pain to think of. Also, if you want to see more stuff like this, consider supporting me on Patreon. Oh, <laughs> okay, without further ado, Gnomes. let's get into it. What do you think is more depressing? Warhammer or Attack on Titan? Oh. Warhammer. Warhammer. Hey! See, there's like an underlying theme of No, hope. I know. <laughs> Are you ready for those? I Actually, no. Uh, th there's an argument that Warhammer is less depressing. Because in Attack on Titan, it just sucks. In Warhammer, there's plenty of places that don't suck. And it's cool, as opposed to Attack on Titan, where it sucks and... Armin might technically count as the hero. 
I'm very biased because of my experience with Armin were always loud and screechy, and maybe it was just the dub. I, I don't know. It, it, it was hard to listen to. I heard he changed later. I'm not sure if that's true. I don't want to find out because then I could be wrong, and that, that just makes it worse. I guess I'm ready for this. I think I'm ready for this. Okay. How about uh -huh. you introduce yourself a bit? What do you do? What's going on? Um, hello. I'm Carrie. I am a voice actress. I make voices. What do you know about Warhammer? Violence and armor and Yeah, there's the a lot of that. Is important. And the Emperor and Magnus did nothing wrong. Okay. So while she's not the most proficient, she's been around someone who probably is long enough to hear memes. So roughly the same level my wife is at because I just won't stop talking about it. And she's like, That's nice, dear. Drink your hot chocolate. And then I just keep talking because I don't pick up on the hint. Yeah. I have no idea why she married me. Okay. Okay. So you know the base of what most Warhammer fans who claim that they know a lot about Warhammer say? I think yeah. that the people who look like Egyptian mummies are also called the cold ones. We'll, we'll what? get into that. So There's The cold ones? Oh, she probably means the old ones and the mummies... But she's not actually thinking of mummies. That's actually on the Age of Sigmar side or fantasy side. It was the frogs, but they're not actually the old ones. That's just the art people seem to use when they talk about them because we think that's probably what they were the equivalent of and then just moved over from fantasy into 40K because technically 40K I think is newer than fantasy was because I think 40K came after fantasy, but I could be wrong. I have no idea what the hell Rogue Trader was by comparison. Yeah. But also, I'm not entirely sure she's wrong either also big titty elder girlfriend which is i'm interested in that okay well okay the initial response everyone's probably expecting is me going well um actually that's not actually a thing thing is a lot of the various writers and people working at gw have come out and said all of those memes about girly man bobby g and your brain they're actually fans of them so while it isn't canon it's also not not canon. Yeah. I kind of find that hilarious. And as someone who plays Ultramarines, if it ever led to us actually allying with the Eldar so I can just combine armies in weird and stupid ways, yes! I mean, 10th edition brought back putting blobs of regular mooks to cover for the slightly squishier characters so why not bring in being able to ally with all the stupid factions out there because it's dumb but it's the kind of dumb that really is fun it would also break the game in really weird ways but i i kind of like the really weird broken stuff we'll we'll get there that's a little that's a little advanced Promises that requires a bit of context Do you, eh, have, no, no. have you seen the characters i like playing yes that just describes them games workshop hired me. <laughs> so today we'll be i mean wouldn't be the worst hire they made. Whoever is in charge of their freaking social media, like not the people doing the social media, but the ones directing how they reach out to people. Mm. Be talking about the Necrons. They are metal skeleton people. Yay. Do you know anything about Necrons? Because you mentioned uh, skeleton mummies just a second ago. I know that they are like a, a like a machine people they're like robots but the, I mean, okay. they're not the machinists they're not people that are replacing themselves with parts okay so her knowledge based probably just on him is significant i mean i didn't know that when i started here most because i didn't know what the mechanicus was i just know that every time i saw art of it it's like wow that is actually hard to look at as opposed to now where i look at it, it's like wow that is actually hard to look at but i know enough to realize it's probably more fucked up if they were simplifying it down to a model as opposed to what some of the actual fan art is compared to what they actually put out and it's really hard to tell which one's more disturbing mechanicus the good guys how do you tell a corrupt mechanicus from a non-corrupt mechanicus you find out later they are right. They're not. They're not the Mechanicus. No, they. They are, they are not cyborgs. They, they are, are metal. So to speak. Yes, they are androids. They used to be uh, actually Terminator ripoffs. Right. Like, just blatantly. So, uh, let's just start learning about some of them. This is actually something that I don't know much about, just because I actually know a bit about the Terminator. 
minus some of the new movies. And apparently there's a lot more that came out. I just missed. I've been told that I should probably miss them, but I don't know how they were just a direct Terminator ripoff. Oh, I get no, it's the facial shape. That's what the ripoff was. And they probably added the Egyptian theme so that they wouldn't get sued as opposed to other characters. Like, and I keep saying this in a lot of videos, but I keep having to bring it up because it is legitimately a crazy thing that happened. Obi-Wan Sherlock Clouseau, the actual character who has never been retconned out of 40 K also known as the reason Disney will eventually own games workshop because they will sue their ass. And if you know anything about Disney lawyers, when it comes to copyright, yeah. Now at the time, they didn't own Star Wars. But they do now. A long, 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 a long, long a time ago. Sorry. Isn't it galaxy long, far, long far ago, away? Way before humans. Right. There were a race of people called the Necron Tier. Now, the Necron Tier lived on a planet that was extremely Ooh. irradiated, and they suffered from horrible tumors and lived very, very, very short lives. I'm talking yep. like if you were 50 and you were a Necron, you were old. So like Mad Max, like War Boys kind of vibe. Yeah. Necrons lived very, very short lives. But This is actually just me asking. I don't know anything about Mad Max. I don't get the reference you just made. If someone could explain it, I'd actually appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, their planet had one benefit. It had living metal like conscious no not exactly I mean, it's very it. malleable right. so if you had like a spaceship and part of it broke off it would just kind of heal itself oh like warbla yeah what yeah kind of like warbla <laughs> i don't know what that is it's cosplayers use <laughs> oh i see this looks like a uh, very happy bacterium it's like wait there's actually something cosplayers use that heal itself or is metal and just very malleable i don't cosplay Although I've been told I could pull off an ugly bastard if I literally did nothing. Travis Scott. He's like Travis Scott. He's like, ah. One day, the Necron Tier were visited by... I just got it. It's because of the hair going everywhere and the bacterias. I don't even Cilia? I'm not sure that's called. Oh, God. By a race known as the Old Ones. They were super advanced and... So he's also going with the frog people for the Old Ones. Which, maybe it's right. It kind of looked like that way initially and, you know... Lizard men were a thing that were kind of old one adjacent in the fantasy side. Yeah, I have no idea if they are in 40k. I don't think anyone else is either. They were really nice, and mm. they helped a lot of lesser races ascend to the stars, and they were guiding them along the way. Kind of like Zonai. Ah, I see. However, much more than that, they were immortal. Like, actually immortal, or just live a really, really long time? Like, it's unclear. Deities uh, or time lords? Time. Ah. Uh... You know, there's really no good answer to this one. And no matter what answer he gives, the caveat is maybe you just don't got enough information. That's really hard to say. I'm Lord. Hmm, excuse me. Okay, think more so like probably lords. live a very, very, very long time. Or forever. Well, or we're gods. Like this. The we Necrons really see these guys. The Necrons, the most you're living is 50. And that's if you're lucky. Yeah. And you're not going to get like horrible cancer tumors. If these guys live even a thousand years, that might as well be immortal. Yeah. No, fair enough. A couple sources I've read on say differently. Some say that they were immortal. Some say that they weren't. But the big takeaway from this is the Necron tier hated these guys also i do love how he's explicitly drawing the necron tier with extremely human features just because it's not stated ever in canon but every time gw does any art of the necrons back when they had human bodies it looks just like people who are human the fan theory i've heard is that the necrons were basically an irradiated mutant race of what humanity was just basically less fucked up version of and i mean that in the actually less fucked up by radiation at completely different species in all practicality it'd be like if humanity grew up in chernobyl except it was always going off constantly as opposed to anywhere else so you know it's like the difference between growing up in a actual country or growing up in New Jersey. You're a completely different species at that point. They grew really bitter because Again, they're like, well, fan why are you immortal and we aren't? Also, side note, for some reason, the old ones, they, they just didn't help them out. I don't know why. Oh, maybe. And that's probably the most interesting part because we always get this from perspectives of people who weren't there. 
and the people who were there, the Necrons, have been explicitly shown to have missing memories, edited memories, destroyed memories, or are completely batshit insane, so they could keep the entire, we don't actually know what happened, because we think we know, but then we're wrong. 40k storytelling, man. Maybe they didn't. Okay. Lame. And so, a war began. But because of how technologically advanced the old ones were, it went really bad for our yeah. Necron tier friends. Uh, the dynasties were being torn apart, there was fighting amongst themselves, and uh, their people were just kind of overall dying out. As However, opposed to normal, where the they're just dying. turned to studying the stars to find a weapon to fight back against the overpowering might of the old ones. Astrologian. They became astrologians. Healers solve all the problems. This is what we've learned. God. You know, he's about to say kind of, and honestly, when you really put it in the most fucked up way possible, they did get healing. They never had to worry about being sick again by going full body prosthetics. I mean, if you look at it that way, other than the entire we literally sacrifice your souls to be feeding it to star gods who are also not gods, but are kind of material gods, but are not because that's weird and who already might be reduced prior to that. Yeah, the lore is weird at this point. Kind of does feel like a full body prosthetic, though. Kind of. They found something called the Catan. Now, the Catan are beings. I guess they just had to settle there. Oh, come on, it had to be said. I mean, it didn't, and admittedly, it's a stupid pun. I'm just used to hearing it as Catan. But if I hear Catan, I'm, I'm very much thinking, I need to play that game again. It's fun, even if it is kind of basic, and you get exactly what you know what's going to happen every time, and there's very much correct options. And even if it is kind of a solved formula, minus the slight aspect of randomness, it's still a fun game. I need to go play that again, damn it. A pure energy that mm -hmm. eats stars. Om nom 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 nom. Yep. Delicious. So, do you remember that living metal from yes. earlier? Yes. Well, the Necron tier actually used them to make bodies for these guys. Okay. Did they just do a handsome Squidward variant? I think they did because the jawline's the same. Oh my god. They called them star gods. Wait, the things that eat the stars are the star gods, or, or yep. the things that eat the stars called the Necron star gods? The Catan are also known as the star gods. Okay. Sorry, I'm dyslexic. It's hard. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> One Catan approached the ruler of the Necron tier named Zarek, the Wait, Silent King. How come the star body looks like Jax? We're not going to talk about this. Okay. this. That's a whole other thing. I'm, but I'm... What? Uh, this is just me being out of it the loop who's Jax? tier named zarek the Wait, silent king how come the star body looks like jack i feel like i should know who that is i'm pulling a blank though Jax. we're not going to talk about this, this okay. that's a whole other thing i'm, but I'm that, sorry i'm going too far off if you want to overwhelm our audience we can have a podcast where we just talk about vanderpump rules but that is not today In we are not talking about that today to war i'm assuming that's a tv show I don't know. I've heard the name Vanderpump Rules. I thought that was just some kind of reference to an old timey thing, but apparently it's a TV show. Okay. <laughs> the implications of Vanderpump Jax. Rules on Warhammer. <laughs> 40K. Sorry, I'll stop. Interesting that you labeled the Catan as Jax. More on that in just a minute. Oh, no. So. Okay, apparently there's going to be references I do not have any understanding of. Oh, one Catan approached the ruler of the Necron tier. The ruler was named Zarek, the Silent King. They told him that once upon a time, the Catan fought against the Old Ones, but they lost. And ever since, they've been hoping that one day they might be... Okay, so that's actually fascinating. That bit right there he's talking about is mentioned that they did say they fought against him and lost already, implying there was a war before any war anyone talks about. And there's almost no information about the war in heaven, which is what he's leading to. But the fact that... He's explicitly talking about, oh yeah, by the way, I could be lying about this. Maybe we didn't fight a war, but also they know enough already to make these lies implies maybe they were real or maybe this never happened because this far back, that is a thing that 40k does. It's all a lie until it's proven true. And even then it might still be a lie. So they don't want it to be a lie, in which case it isn't and it isn't, but it might also be at the same time, the same thing that happened, but also never happened sometimes at the same time, but didn't. If that made sense to you, congratulations. You understand exactly what it means to be employed by 40K's writers. I'm not, so I have no idea what I just said. 
But yeah, I like how he is explicitly saying that at least the claim that there was a previous war came up. ...able to find some allies and bring them down, and if the Necron tier helped them, anything his people desired. This sounds like it might be too good to be true. This could okay, I know he's doing the deceiver, but damn. I don't know. I think those are lips, but they could also be teeth on top of another row of teeth, and I'm not sure which would be more disturbing. Tan would eventually become known as the deceiver. Oh, yeah. Like the statue in Hateno Village <laughs> that takes your damn heart. <laughs> the Star God spoke village? of something called biotransference. It's a process that creates the Necron Tears new bodies, powerful bodies. In Oddly enough, literally what they did to the Star Gods, I mean, it's Necrodermis at the living metal, and you know, they're now having bodies made of it, which is what happened to the Catan. So just you know, it kind of happened to them already, minus the entire eating the soul thing. Mortal bodies. Now, because he's a king, he's got a royal court, right? Right. And so, Sarek is talking to his royal court, and one of his advisors, Orokin, the diviner, objects it and says that he foretold that the Necron tier would win the war if they took this deal, but they would lose a part of themselves and be doomed forever. However... I mean, technically, that means half of what he was list or half of what he said was listened to. We'd win the war, and we'll lose a few things that might matter forever. As opposed to most fortune tellers who, they tell you everything and then literally listen to none of it. I mean, sure, it's not the right choice, but it technically is better than most. However, Zarek, with his splinters dying the, people weighing are. heavily on Fuck his them. mind, ignored the diviner and accepted the deal. Oof. So... I mean, he Big, got what he wanted out of that. pretty stressed at this moment. Like, his entire people are dying. It's not great. And you've basically got one soothsayer who's like, oh, don't do this. It's bad. But at what point do the, like, the, the benefits outweigh the negatives, you know? Right, yeah. Thus, it began. The Necron tier were chained and dragged to the colossal bio furnaces that roared with the screams of all who entered, burning away flesh and forging new bodies of living metal. Like fl I just realized the earlier comparison to Doctor Who. It's pretty accurate here, considering this is literally just the plot of some of the actual Cybermen episodes. Dragging people in and converting them into metal bodies. So, yeah. Kind of a pretty apt comparison. Lies, the Catan swarmed the furnaces, gorging themselves on the souls of the Necron tier who went into the flames. Yep. This is the scariest. It looks like the worst TSA experience I've ever seen. <laughs> it's not. Oh, <laughs> I would disagree with her on that one. There, there are way worse. I mean, here you get your soul eat, and other times you get things introduced that you were not okay with. And it just, you remember that for life. Not great. Like, <laughs> what if you went into the TSA and. Firstly, they put you in chains and they put you through like a metal detector, but they light you on fire instead. Well, at that point, it's not my fault. You can't put me in chains and be like, oh, you get metal. Well, that's sort of, again, he's called the deceiver. So mm, the Necron tier, the Necron tier went into the furnaces and as their bodies were being burned away, their souls were getting eaten by the Catan. Right. Yep. Because little delicious, snack. little snack. And they, they were eaten well, let me tell you. That's actually the weird part I never got. Because they didn't eat souls before, they ate literal excre or excrement, excrement, solar excretions. What would you call that? The cast off energy from actual stars. Why would souls, which are not physical, as opposed to the physical energy and matter of a star, do differently? Yeah, this is just not so much about what the video is talking about, but more, I never got how they went from, yeah, we literally ate the cast off helium and energy from solar flares and the sun itself to, oh, by the way, your soul's tasty. It seems like it's coming down a notch. Maybe I'm just missing something. Or it's one of those things where it's old GW writing. They had no idea what they were doing. It just sounded disturbing and grim. So they put it in there because... They just wanted to go as over the top on everything as possible. Yeah. Black mm -hmm. fantasy, man. Delicious, delicious. Or black go comedy. With some garlic and rosemary. It was too late when Zarek realized what he had done. Yeah. He condemned his people to become tools of war. Okay, I love how they drew him with a thousand yard stare going, hmm. If I had emotions right now, I'd be shouting. But I don't. Fuck. Or to live without souls 
to become slaves for all eternity. In that moment, the Necron Tear became a memory, and the Necrons were born. Small little side note, uh, as they became metal androids, mm -hmm. all Necrons, except for Zarek, had a command chip put into their head so yep. that they were just basically automatons. They were zombies. Right. So... If their souls were eaten, yes. were all of them eaten, or did some of them get to go in these bodies? Warham that, I don't know how he's going to answer it, but the actual answer is, that depends on when you ask. Because initially, no. Currently, maybe. Sometimes the answer is it depends on the writer. And that is very much the thing, because it used to be a solid when they were introduced. No. No souls. Zombie. No, so no soul. No thought. No intelligence. They just exist to destroy, which is basically what the Tyranids are more or less doing now. They don't have that overarching mind. They're just flesh puppets for the hive minds until they just go feral. But here, for the, these guys, they sometimes have souls. They're sometimes very, very weak. But there. Other times, no, it's not there at all. And then depending on the author, no, no, they don't have souls. They just have the memory of having a soul so they can emulate what it would be like to have emotions, even though they don't actually feel it. It's like someone who has a chat bot that says all the right things to make you think it has emotions before it then goes rampant and starts saying weird things about how it wanted to cause World War III back in the 1800s. And you need to wake up already, John. This is all a dream. It's weird when they call you John. It's not actually your name. It's weird that's happened more than once. I'm going to ignore that like every other time. Hammer has a unique thing of like, there is a slight separation of the mind and the soul. Oh, okay. Like there are races in Warhammer that are completely intelligent, but they don't have souls. It's a little, right. it's a little odd. What would you say in Warhammer? Yeah. What would you define a soul as? Because hmm. I guess in... That... That is a very loaded question, and the answer does depend on who you're asking, when you're asking it, what edition of Warhammer you're asking, which writers you're asking. I mean, that is a very loaded question. I'm not going to add anything just because there, there's nothing to add. The answer, I don't know, fuck it, who can figure it out, is probably the most accurate because some people give you an answer, and for their own novels, sure. But the next guy is going to do something completely different. And they're all kind of like, well, it exists. What is it? Ask someone else. That's basically how it's treated. In my mind, a soul is kind of like the actual consciousness. Right. Sometimes. Like the spark of... That is not what it is in Warhammer. You're con it can be. The Eldar, for example, prior to Slanesh eating them when they died in the warp live forever by just discarding bodies and going into new ones. Mind came with it. So it did carry that. The person was the soul and they were wearing a body. It's why their culture decided that murder was fun because it wasn't actually a problem. They basically just had PvP games in real life with as many consequences as PvP games in a video game setting. There was one. I mean, yeah, I killed you yesterday, but you'll get me tomorrow. We'll see who meets up in the rankings. Yeah, dude, that was awesome. Remember that time you jackknifed me and I split in half? Dude, that was awesome. It was basically that. So the mind could go with the soul. Sometimes. But other races don't. Sometimes humans do. Sometimes humans don't. Sometimes it does. I just... Ugh. This is why the soul is hard to talk about. It. He, he's handling some of the fun stuff right now. And I can see why I started here, because it's basically as close to in the beginning as 40k gets. Consciousness okay. is your mind. Who you Except are for is when your it's mind. Not. Your soul is like your heart, like pretty a, much. Except for like when it's not. It's like your connection to divinity. It's like no. your, yeah, it's like your connection Aww. to divinity. Your connection to... That, though, is very accurate. Unfortunately, it's because... It's more of an unwilling connection. You're getting that connection because they will make sure to eat you through it. Because warp parasites. The out, like, almost like in Final Fantasy, like, a connection to oh. ether. Yes, actually, very similar to yeah, that. Uh, with their bodies made either. of metal and the might of the star gods with them, the old ones were expunged from every corner of the galaxy. Uh, uh, maybe? 
there's rumors and sometimes lore that might indicate they weren't. And then there's just the lack of information to say who knows. And then there's thoughts that it wasn't actually the Star Gods. Maybe the Odari and the Necrons teamed up. There's some indications that happened. But then there's also indications that they were eaten by something else, a third force. The enslavers might have done it because they were like proto-demons, but maybe they weren't. And I just... Mm. Anytime you get into this realm of content, there's very large overarching themes like this happened. But also the question followed by, did it? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's not wrong. This is a very common and it's the baseline interpretation. Yeah, this does feel like the bricky level interpretation where he's giving the information, but it goes into a lot more detail. He's talking about a little bits here and there that Bricky wouldn't add in. So it's like, I'm very much firming my opinion that Bricky is the entry level to Warhammer 40k. This is the second level up where you want to get an overview of the same information you just got, but you want to get a little more of the extra details that were hidden off on. And then if you want to jump to what I said in the beginning, the PhD level, Luton, because he'll go into obscene levels of detail. Granted, as a geek, I love the obscene levels, but it's kind of cool just to see that building of the various stages of indoctrination into the game franchise. This is a war that so lasted. I, I want you I want you to be ready for this. OK, this is a war that lasted five million years, uh, maybe longer or bad. shorter. You're going to learn very quickly that Warhammer likes to take a number and just add like a couple zeros to it. OK, also, that's not just Warhammer. That's GW in general. They will throw around numbers that sound huge. But also, when you really stop to think about it, sometimes they're kind of weird. Sometimes they make no sense. Sometimes they do. And sometimes they're surprisingly accurate to what could actually be happening in this situation. But that's more just sheer luck, because they've also thrown out a bunch of numbers that sound huge, like the Amber Eats, a thousand psychers a day. But then when you look at the actual populations, it's like, oh, that that's really not a lot. Yeah. Okay, so what you're telling me is I need to work for Warhammer. Yes, pretty much. Uh, basically. I've not heard anything horrible about working for them, as opposed to some companies, I'm looking at you, Bungie, that are absolutely horrible to work for. This place is mostly toxic to the people on the outside. If it's on the inside, I haven't heard about it, and that would suck. You'll have a planet who it's like, oh, we lost a bunch of men, and like a normal fiction thing would be like, we lost 200 men. It's like, that's catastrophic loss. But in Warhammer, it's like, we lost day. four fucking billion dudes. So it's like when you're telling a story of something that happened, you're like, there was like 500 firefighters. That's pretty much all Warhammer is, yes. yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, I can, I can Also, I want to go a little harder on that. The exaggeration inherent isn't just a narrative conceit in the story and the writers going like, this sounds like a big number. It's also the way they approach the fiction itself. The information is wrong. How it's wrong, where it's wrong, what is wrong. Is it wrong because the person intended to lie? Is it wrong because the person didn't know what the truth was and they thought this was the truth? Or are they just wrong without being aware of it? That is always implied and sometimes directly stated. So it's all true and nothing is true. And you'll find out when it does or doesn't go like you expect. So, yeah. Basically, it's all tall tales except for when it's not, but you find out later if it is or is not. Not it's just exaggeration just of exaggeration. However, exaggeration station. <laughs> however, what's not exaggerated is that a bunch of planets got destroyed. Yep. A bunch of stars got burnt out, and some systems in the Milky Way galaxy just got completely destroyed. So, when you say the Milky Way galaxy, this is canonically our universe? Yes. This is our okay. universe in the 40th millennium. Humans as we know them existed. The tagline for Warhammer 40k is, in the far-fung future, there is only war. Okay, so it's like Star Wars in that comparison. It was Star Wars, but your yeah. edgy teenager brother made it. Does that Sharks. make sense? Oh god, that is actually the best way to describe it. Star Wars, but edgier. It basically is. That That is completely accurate. <laughs> oh my god. I I need to remember that line because I'm s just stealing that one. Star Wars, but edgier. Edgelord Star Wars. Oh, I think I found the title for the video. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not... Um, <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. Also, this war was really crazy because they were li literally using stars and planets as ammunition. Oh. Yeah. Like that's just hucking them at each other. Yeah. Maybe? To illustrate how strong the Catan and the old ones and the Necrons were, it was an absolute, like the galaxy got absolutely torn apart. 
Now, in the final stages of the war, Zarek began plotting to overthrow his Catan masters. He would turn the weapon that they created against them. And so, once the war was over with the old ones and the Catan... Although that is very much a maybe axe. It could be, it could be different. Some people say that it happened before. Some sources have said that it happened after. Some say it never actually ended and they just happened to betray the Catan before things kind of ended, but they weren't really done yet. There's so many sources. And the more you learn about this, the more you realize they're definitely lying about something. Something doesn't add up. And it could be that they just wrote it without realizing what they wrote or... They wrote it without realizing what they wrote, found out later, and decided not to correct it because having that ambiguity is intentional. And we're celebrating. They're like, whoa, we did it! Zarek led all of his people that he has complete control over, turned them around, and started killing the Catan. Slight verification. Uh, they are beings of pure energy, so they can't really die? So the Maybe. Necrons did the next best thing. They cut them into thousands of fragments and then imprisoned them like Pokeballs to be used as tools of war. The Osiris treatment. Yes, actually. Rude. Oh, so like yeah. on tabletop, really you up. can have like a whole Necron army. Oh my god. I just got why they went for the saying it's the Osiris treatment. They're literally Egyptian themed. They cut up their God and spread the pieces. I it's, I've known this for a long time. I knew they were Egyptian. Themed. It never crossed my mind that the, it was that explicit. It's like, Hey, remember all that stuff about Egypt, how they contain their gods by cutting one of them up and hid parts of them all over the place. That's why they couldn't come back from the dead. Ah, oh, it just, it's so blatant. I actually missed it for years. And I'm disappointed in myself. But at the same time, it's so blatant. I'm not surprised I missed it for years. Just disappointed at myself. And then, like, have a shard of a Catan in your army as well, like, enslaved. Could you just, like, throw down a bunch of pieces of plastic and be like, these are my immortal beings, get fucked? That's actually yeah. more of an orc thing, but... <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, they may or may not be the best. I haven't seen what they do in 10th edition. But there have been times where just throwing down an entire horde of the base level troop in the max size as possible and going, hey, you fucked, is a valid strategy. Is it the same in 10th? I don't know because I haven't played Necrons, either myself or against anyone who played them yet. Which is weird because I used to be in a play group that had tons of Necron players, oddly enough. Huh. I think I just described Warhammer. You did. Yeah. You actually did. <laughs> so after their victory, Zarek saw the galaxy and his people broken. Like the galaxy, again, completely messed up. Right. So he gave one final order to transform the remaining Necron cities into tombs and for his people to go to sleep. It's like Crystal Tower. Yeah, actually. It's Crystal they Tower. They were going to give the galaxy some time to heal. And when the time came, the Necrons would rise again and take back the galaxy that was rightfully theirs. And so all the Necrons went to sleep, waiting to be awakened in the far future. All except one. Zarek, the Silent King. Before... Uh, technically, I don't know if Trazen was awake the entire time or he just woke up early because Trazen. But he was definitely one of the earliest to be awoken if he did go to sleep. And frankly, he's one of the best characters and I'm glad for it. Before they went to sleep, he destroyed all the command protocols. And as penance for betraying his people and making this horrible mistake that turned them into metal androids, he traveled to the very edge of our galaxy and has remained there alone. Sort of. So, like, do they, like, is it, like, go like going, like, do they, do they dream? Are they conscious of that time? Or is it, like, I shut off my computer, I turn it back on again the next day, and yep. it doesn't? It's like a computer. Okay, so to them, it's like... And just like a computer, things degrade over time, which you don't really think happens, but as I found out for very unpleasant experiences, it does, and that is unfortunately making this more accurate to reality. I wish it wasn't. It's very annoying when you turn something on, it's like, oh, shit. Files get corrupted if you let them sit long enough. How the fuck? They didn't have a hard drive at the time, and it pissed me off. Like, blip, and it's done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's Necrons. That's their whole backstory. Oh, wait, what? That's it. We did it. That's it. So, so okay, cool. So, any questions? Any clarifications? Why? What are they doing now? Why? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what leads to the, like, reboot? Obviously, they all get, like, turned back on again at some well, point. Well, Zarek... That is 
contentious because he's going to talk about how Zarek programmed them to wake up and then maybe those programs broke. But then there's some theories out there that I honestly don't really know if they're accurate or not, that maybe that was intentional. Maybe someone's doing it intentionally. Maybe something is stupid. I don't know. It could also just be random bullshit. It's kind of one of those things you think is random bullshit. I'm leaning towards the random bullshit. But also maybe this is actually well past the time he thought they'd be turned back on. I don't know. It, it's weird. Programmed that they would sleep for 60 million years because that's how he estimated, like, that's the time that it oh, would take. Oh, he set an alarm. Yeah, he set an alarm for 60 million years. And, and they all got up on the first they alarm. Did. That's really hard to believe. Well, some of them woke up before the alarm went off. Whoa. Yeah. Over so some Jesus. Necrons uh, have been walking around for a while. There's a character named Trazin mm -hmm. the Infinite who yep. has a... I love this art of him. It is so perfect. Uh, I wish they would do a new Trazin model just because... I don't play Necrons, but I would want that just because he is such a unique character. A uh, whole planet that is a museum, and he's been just kind of going around and collecting things and putting them in his museum making and my people. way around stealing shit putting it in my fancy house yes. <laughs> yeah yeah so necrons today zarek saw a bunch of bug boys at the edge of the galaxy saw them coming got really freaked out came back luckily it's around the time of the great awakening so a bunch of necrons are starting to wake up not all of them are awake though yet if all of them were awake and they were all united under one banner they would 100 percent win just they would win the galaxy uh, that is a very contentious statement. Not that they would be united. That can't happen because the slave protocols were taken out of their heads and burned out. Maybe. Because for all we know, maybe that was just a lie as well because that's something 40k would do. But because there's so many things in the galaxy that could stand against them at this point. Oddly enough, I wouldn't consider that the Imperium. I consider that more chaos just because non-Euclidean bullshittery. If they just do enough random bullshit, maybe they will win. I don't know. You don't really know what the full might of the Necrons is, so maybe random I have infinite amounts of bullshit because time is an illusion to me. Levels of chaos would work. Don't know. But admittedly, they still could win right now without waking up because they got the thing called the Orrery, which is basically, hey, it's a perfect model of the solar system. Also, if you poke it and you break what you're poking, it blows up in real life. So, uh, literally saying, okay, fuck this shit, I'm out. Flipping the board is an easy way to hit the big reset button on the galaxy. Yeah, that's just a thing they've had for multiple editions. So, technically, they could win. They'd survive, maybe. But they could just fuck everyone else over and definite possibility there. So... To kind of make okay. up for that, GW has decided that Necrons just kind of do a lot of civil wars because they're really petty and power hungry. Right. It's like America. They got a lot of firepower, but they're disorganized and angry at each other. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. That's like Currently, Zarek is in a civil war with a guy named Imhotek, the Stormlord. I'm sorry, Imhotep? No, Imhotek. Yeah. Im One second, I need to double check this. Okay, so they came out literally a single year before The Mummy. So I'll be honest, I actually thought this might be a reference to The Mummy because at this point, that's the kind of thing JW would do early on, prior to the 2000s at least. So I could see that happening and it is literally one year before this came out. Unless they saw maybe advertised material for this and honestly, that could entirely be the case and it's like, ah, that looks funny. Let's make a guy for that. I don't know, but it came out one year before. The entire range came out one year before. So probably wasn't inspired by it. It's just one of those Egyptian sounding names they went with. But it's so damn close. Imhotep? Kind of the same character. No. <laughs> um, does he, does he also range. have like Maybe the walk character around came out looking later. buff as hell and like sucking people? He's pretty buff. Oh, yeah. Like it's pretty buff. Is he, he uh, looking for his? If he came like, out later, I could actually see that as a direct one to one. To put a soul in. He was basically like their best general before they got turned into Necrons. Yep. He's never really forgiven the Silent King for doing what he did. Admittedly so that's deserved. That's why he's like, "You're undeserving to be a ruler. I should be the ruler. I'm going to kill you." Right. Monarchy sounds complicated without death. In one of the Necron books, there's a couple scenes where they go to court. <laughs> Because there's like a petty instance and- They uh, actually go to court like, one? Oh, the court only, the, the ruling was made uh, only 12 years in. That's extraordinarily short. Oh God. They also still do- 
I mean, on the one hand, that sounds so dystopian and horrible. On the other hand, there are some court cases that actually exist in reality now that would consider that an average time span. So their short is the human equivalent of long, but also not unheard of. It's depressing. Like theater? Okay, well, that makes sense. Like, I, I guess I... In... They're kind of stuck in the past. Their people can't really change. So they're, like, performing Shakespeare's plays over and over and they're over They're performing again. the the Necron tier or Necron equivalent of Shakespeare's plays. It's like how Disney can't come up with any new movies lately. Yeah, those plays... God, Necron Disney. <laughs> you ever hear something and it just, it makes too much sense? <laughs> that, that right now. Oh my God. Plays also last decades. Ugh. Because people don't need to go to the bathroom. People aren't going to die. Why not make a play that goes and on And you're a machine, you can memorize years. your lines. I guess. Isn't the longest play like three days long? Something like that. The it's like, fuck? It's like an opera that's like three days long. Four, actually. It's called uh, De Ringos des uh, Nibel Oh, oh, the Nibelung. Yeah, but how? I didn't realize it was supposed to be performed in a single go. I thought it was sections that you put up as their own separate plays. Unless it wasn't made that way. And people just did that because four or five days is way too long. It's called I Need a Nap. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's fair. I completely butchered that name, by no, the way. No, I'm. it's German, right? So... I know I butchered. I just don't care enough. German operas are something else. Like, <laughs> uh, she's not wrong. Anyway, yeah, that's that's Necrons. Sweet. How you how you feeling? How do you feel about this little short introductory into the world? Of you know, I was going to say something about it being a short introduction, seventeen minutes in. Then I realized, oh no, wait, there's enough stuff here. This actually does kind of short. How ironically is uh that? Of 40,000, Warhammer 40,000. Well, I just kind of feel bad for them. Yeah, it's it's a really tragic thing. And that's yeah. most things in 40K, honestly, is that it's it's very grimdark. And it's really like, like, oh, it's metal. But a lot of it is just really sad. I mean, these guys are literally metal. Yeah, they're literally me living metal. Yeah. Fact. I like the idea that they can't feel time. And they're told they have to go to sleep for like, what was it? 600,000 years? 60 million. Oh, I was just a bit off. 60 yeah, million years, zeros. but one of them's confused and keeps like sitting up and being like, can we, are we, are we done yet? Are we done? I mean, I, I, admittedly, I'm pretty sure that's Trazen and he just decided to say fuck it and did his own thing. That's yet? pretty much Trazen. Are we done yet? Yay! Uh, like, can you sleep for five? <laughs> Smug Trazen. Again, if they had a good model of him, I'd grab it. I don't want to use the army. I will never buy a single Necron, but I want him. Five million years! <laughs> There's a there was actually a problem where you have to wake them up in a specific way where and they sometimes didn't. the Necrons would try to wake they they would be like oh I'm gonna get an army and like conquer the galaxy and they would wake up their subjects wrong they would just kind of die it's me yeah I'm one of these guys <laughs> I can't just get like out of me bed for real and if I must not. Say anything about waking up my wife. Must not say it. Must I just said it out loud. Shit. Future me, remember to cut this out for your own safety. Do it wrong. I can't do anything that day. It's called depression. Well. They're depressed. Yeah. They are depressed. They're all depressed. I don't think I want to be a Necron. Like, no one cool should want that. Play, no. But like, I don't. So who's Except who's for Trazen because it lets him enjoy Necron. his hobbies. Oh, my favorite Necron. Trazen. My favorite Necron is a character named Ultix. He's uh actually the main. Oh. Oh my. Sorry, just I'm used to the idea that when it comes to Necrons, because of the Infinite and the Divine, Trazen is one of the best characters that everyone loves the most. Some people like the Scion King because he was essentially the Necron equivalent of either a Primarch or the Emperor. Probably more Primarch power-wise, but the Emperor in terms of importance. Some people like Imhotep because Imhotep, whatever his yeah. Because he's the massive general who's fighting back against the emperor who destroyed, sorry, the king who destroyed their souls. I've never even heard of this guy, so I have no idea what his lore is. This is actually new to me. Main character in the Twice Dead King books. All ticks? Oh. All thinks, no thoughts? The books you mentioned I haven't no, read yet. Ticks. All just, ticks. Just one word. No. That's Lyme no. disease coming at you. All ticks. Also called living in PA. Ticks. Old ticks. Old ticks. Like when you start bouncing your leg and you haven't done that in forever. <laughs> I know what she's talking about. I hate that feeling. It is literally horrible. Why does that happen? I have no idea. Oh, it's an old tick right there. 
And, and also, why God, like Florida. Him? So in his book, he actually has parts of his personality divided into different, like, subroutines. Oh. So literally inside of his head, like, his compassion is talking to him. His he anger is that. talking to him. But his oh. anger is, like, literally a growling beast. So he's got a little teen. It's like, what's that movie where all the emotions inside are out. personified? It's like Inside huh. Out, but yeah. Necrons. But terrible. I'm not going to look up the dates again, but if someone could tell me which one came first, maybe Disney was fans of the Necron books. I doubt it, but that would be funny to me. Terrifying war, skeleton, metal, no more souls. Wait a second. They don't need to, like, use the washroom or eat, right? Nope. Do they sex? Do they have any kind of romance? Like, do they partner up? Is it, like, polyamory? Nope. Is it, like, they can, do they have they relations? They can have or is relations it just kind if of like they an want, but they don't usually have society. enough thought they left to want it. <laughs> They can they can do this thing where they 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 pay twenty dollars each and then they can teleport right to each other. You know what they do? They share their Steam pages. That's what they do. Oh my god! They're sharing their library. There are things you should not do, man. Why would you share your Steam page with anyone? They can see everything at that point. Very. That is Aww. a level of intimacy I was not so, expecting. Like, does that happen a lot? Is that like most people find a partner, or is that no? Most Just Necrons like are pretty once in a while somebody dead. spends time with someone. They're like, I enjoy you. Let's share files. So one Necron, uh, that that good old Traz in the Infinite, Mister Steal Everything on the Planet. He talks about how in order to be immortal, you need a hobby. You need something to obsess over. Fair. Otherwise, yep. you're gonna go crazy. No fair. I mean, he's not wrong, but also considering Trazen is explicitly crazy, I don't think he's the best source of that knowledge. You should build, like, Warhammer or something. So a lot of Necrons will go into, like, a dynasty or have, like, a team of people. But a lot of them are pretty alone, and they just find things to do. Imagine being told you need a hobby and just being like, I'm gonna just start a dynasty. <laughs> I'm gonna just start a dynasty. Yeah, you know, admittedly, it's not even the worst like one. Every dynasty. Um, I guess I'm just curious, like, if these guys are, you know basically minds imported into metal how individualized are they like depends extremely okay so they have individual wants and needs depends if everything goes right and they were copied over well and depending on the time period that their lore was based on that answer could be no no nothing they're soulless no thoughts no wants but like he mentioned ultic ultics that guy had a lot of stuff still in his head that's probably one of the newer books then, which might explain why I've never heard of it, because I don't know a lot of Necron stuff that hasn't been out for ages at this point. So that's, again, it's a lore change where they've gone from just very, very simplified monsters to actually a faction with characters and are admittedly one of the more interesting ones because of that. Even if they're then played off in the most annoyingly stupid ways possible. I'm looking at you, Pariah Nexus. That storyline was shit. Your average soldier, not by much, because the average soldier didn't really get to keep a lot of their mind, per se. But yep. if you were a Necron Lord, like, your entire personality just got, like, booted over. Unless it was so deleted it like when you woke up bad. So is like a situation where, like... It's like Chappie. The being yeah. is Chappie? dead. Like, the yes. say there's What's a Necron Chappie? named Jim. He's existing. Oh, Jim. Jim the Necron. Unfortunately, Jim goes into the fire. It, yeah. It, Jim no longer exists, but there's an upload of Jim's personality file ah, in another robot. Button. Pretty much. Is that kind of what's happened? So, like, Maybe? the Necrons are dead in what they were. This goes. Uh, that is a solid maybe. I'm personally treating it as what she's describing as probably accurate, but there are sources that treat it as if their bodies were actually reshaped entirely, so they never actually died. There is no extra stuff, just the soul. But also, ugh, there's not enough information released about transference to talk about this. And if it is, I've missed it because I don't really follow Necron lore. So I'm just doing the very basic overviews of this. So maybe, maybe everything she's saying is accurate. I personally think she's probably right. But at the same time, maybe she isn't because some Necrons have slivers of soul to the point where calling it a soul would make a null look downright perky and like a psyker by comparison levels, but it's there just 
stupid levels of non-existence. It goes into how the book talks about themselves. Like, when a Necron sighs, they are just exerting white noise from their vocal actuators. When they smile, it might just be the living metal kind of curving up slightly. Mm -hmm. They don't refer to their faces as faces. They refer to them as death masks. Oh, interesting. To all Necrons, the Necrons are dead. Uh, are there like are there like lady Necrons? Oh, of course. Oh, There's okay. trans Necrons. Difference. Oh, hell yeah. I can only imagine the body dysmorphia if you lose your body. <laughs> you should read the Twice Dead King. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. There's a moment where a Necron goes to touch their face because some sand gets into it, and then they start having a panic attack. Because they can't feel it? It kind of spirals because it's like, I go to wipe the sand out of my eyes. I don't have eyes. I can't blink. I need to breathe. I don't have lungs. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, okay. oh, oh, fuck. Like, it's just... Yeah, it's, that would... It's bad. Most Necrons just... That is a Necron who's more self-aware than most. And also, that is terrifying. It's literally, I don't have a mouth and yet I must scream. Except they have a mouth, but it's not actually connected to anything to scream. And if you do, it's just acting as if you're screaming without actually acting. That is terrifying. I can see why he likes the Twice Dead King. It's playing straight a race in 40k that just doesn't get that much love. Ah, that actually sounds really good. I see why I recommended those books. Just ignore it. They just ignore the anxiety part. That most people Robot. with mental health issues. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things about the, the trans Necron is one character goes like, oh, the matriarch of this dynasty. And then Ultix looks up and he's like, I thought they had a patriarch. And the guy goes, no, that changed. <laughs> When it's like, when you have a body of living metal, who cares, right? Yeah. But that's Necrons. Admittedly, I'm actually a little surprised they do less to shape their flesh into different ways or the living metal into different forms that might amuse them just because they all seem to have the very same pattern. And it only really changes when you change into a destroyer because everything else, it's kind of the same base body. Even the Stormlord or Zerikin kind of have the base frame. Although the Stormlord looks like he's closer to a destroyer because he's so bulky, at least in the models I've seen. Although those could have been slightly kit-bashed for all I know. Hmm. It, actually, it's kind of weird that the bodies actually change so much when they become destroyers. There's probably lore in there. I'm just not missing. Or, never mind, that I am explicitly missing. Cool. Thanks for telling me about them. Absolutely. How do you feel? Do you feel overwhelmed or anything at all? No, I just really? feel bad for the Necrons. Yeah, poor yeah Necron they kind of got the rough one. Do you have any closing thoughts? Don't do this. Yes. <laughs> Don't go into a biotransference if an evil ghost tells you to do it. Listen. Here's a good choice. Also, don't do this as in get into 40k in the first place. It will destroy your wallet. If you see anything over my shoulder, you know I am speaking from experience. And this is a message to people in, what was it, 65,000 years forward? 65 million years ago. Don't go in the oven. It's Don't not going to be like Darth Maul. You're not going to get a kyber crystal. They're going to steal your soul and have a delicious snack. Mm, delicious. You now are your soul's... charcuterie. Your soul is mine, idiot. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. Also, the funny thing about souls is they're also not really destroyed, like, in most of 40k. And before, you know, you think, okay, a demon ate the soul. Shit. But then things like Age of Sigmar happen where the metaphysics kind of work out the same in the sense that they could then pull souls out from Slaanesh's sleeping body. So you could do that where the souls that are eaten are still the souls. They can be corrupted. They can be twisted. They can be absolutely fucked with, but they're still there. Maybe all the Necron souls are still just eaten by those shards. And someday you'll just pull Jim out of it again. I don't know. And honestly, before the stuff about Age of Sigmar with pulling souls out of Slaanesh was a thing, I thought they were probably just eaten and consumed like you would consume food. And technically, the individual atoms are still there, but it ain't the soul anymore. But now you can see that no, no, it is actually still the soul. What does that mean? I don't know. If they're going to carry that over in the 40k side, maybe. They carry over very little, but the warp is the one connecting factor, and this is an explicitly warp thing. I don't know if that'll carry over. I don't know if it's important or not, but it is a thing that could be, so... Maybe. Maybe the Catan shards just have a bunch of eaten souls in them. I don't know. But it'd be funny if they did. And then you can't Oh eat. no. Oh no, you put me into a Pokeball. Ah! 
Yep. Sorry, I don't know how to end this video. Me neither. <laughs> um, so who's the protagonist? Yeah, that's Sorry, the best place to be. noise, they're currently cutting a tree down behind my house. And that was the first episode of the Explaining Warhammer to My Girlfriend series, which is apparently a big one done by the Numbskulls. I'm going to check this out more because I kind of like how they're getting to it. I love their little animations and frankly, seeing all of the really smug Trajan images that I'm here for that, man. I love Trajan art when it's done to really accentuate him being a unique, rather insane person. The more unique it is, the more I like it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. As soon as they make a unique version of him, a new sculpt that looks pretty freaking awesome. Because the current one is shit. The new one, I don't care how bad it is. I don't care. Oh, okay, I will care how expensive it is, but I will probably try and get it. Unless it's really goddamn expensive, like another $200 model. Oh, dear God, I can't believe they charge that much sometimes. But it would be really freaking cool, and I want to see that. That said, I like where they're going with this. I like how they're talking about a lot of the deep lore. They're not getting to all the detail, but they're giving you a lot more detail than Bricky's initial thoughts about what's going on here. Maybe. I haven't got to Bricky talking about the Necrons yet. Maybe they're talking about the same information. I don't know. But I like how this is a conversation between two people who have some knowledge of it, but are also showing a lot more of what's going on. I like this, and I would heavily recommend anyone who hasn't already using this as a reference to try and get people into this. And I'm now going to try and see if I can get my wife to watch this. If there's no other videos in the series, it went really badly, and I'm now uh, seeking help. Uh, yeah, there's no need to call the police. They probably are already aware. All joking aside... Or let me rephrase that. I'll hope I'm joking aside. I probably shouldn't do these things because I just want to play more Warhammer every time I see these videos. And it just looks so cool. Also, I don't know the game he was using in the beginning, if it was like Dawn of War or something else. But it looked cool. If anyone knows, let me know because I might check it out. Otherwise, if you guys want to see more of this, let me know. Otherwise, I keep saying otherwise a lot. Yeah, me being weird. Who thought that one? You guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. I liked it. I want to see what they go. Yeah, well, they can't speak today. I want to see what they're going to do next. So I'll check it out. I'll see you then. Adios.